Neil Nigialak, Nile of the Nine Hostages. Nile of the Nine Hostages is a partly historical, mostly legendary High King of Ireland who features prominently within the Irish mythological cycle of kings. In Gaelic, he is known as Neil Nigialak, which translates literally as Nile of the Nine Hostages or the Nine Pledges. While there are two different accounts about why he got this name, what they agree on is that it was because he had pledges, but where they disagree is on exactly what kingdoms those hostages came from. The more popular of the two accounts says that Niall took hostages as pledges of fealty from the five Irish provinces of Ulster, Munster, Leinster, Connacht and Meath, which was once a province of its own, along with a hostage from the Saxons, the Scots, the Britons and even as far as Gaul. But a less common story says that all of the hostages came exclusively from the kingdom of Aryula, once an impressive Gaelic kingdom founded by the legendary Three Collars based in the northern counties of modern-day Tyrone and Armagh, and whose name literally translates as the Givers of Hostages. A team of geneticists at Trinity College Dublin led by Professor Dan Bradley, discovered that as many as 3 million men worldwide may be descendants of Nile of the Nine Hostages. The genetic evidence of the study seems to show that the strongest associations with the M222 gene are with the surnames traditionally linked to the O'Neill, that is the Doherty clan, the Gallagher clan, the O'Reilly clan and the Quinn clan. This discovery moved it was previously thought to be entirely legendary into the realm of historical fact. Another historical fact is that the O'Neill dynasty, a great power base of the descendants of Nile of the Nine Hostages, is a real historical certainty, even if we can't be entirely sure about the facts concerning its founder. According to legend, Nile was a warrior king at a time when Ireland was divided into many kingdoms and a hierarchy of kingship existed. Geoffrey Keating's Forest Fiasa Neheran, The Foundations of the Knowledge of Ireland, dates the reign of Nile of the Nine Hostages to the 4th century, between the years 368 AD to 395 AD, while the Annals of the Four Masters give us the years 376 to 405 AD. However, modern scholars date his reign at least 50 years later than this. In any case, Nile of the Nine Hostages is just recent enough for us to be able to regard him as genuine historic person who hailed from Ulster and who ruled Ireland as High King somewhere around the end of the 4th century and who was the progenitor or the great ancestor of the mighty O'Neill clan that dominated Ulster and much of the northern half of Ireland from the 6th to the 10th century. Even though much of the material we have about him is regarded as mythology. He is born the son of an Irish high king named Yoi Mugmadon, a descendant of Con of the Hundred Battles, and Karen Kostov, or Karen of the Black Curly Hair, who is described to be either the daughter of a king of Britain by Geoffrey Keaton, a Roman Briton, or a Saxon. Polygamy was not unheard of in Ireland, in fact it was quite a common affair, and Karen was the second wife of King Yoi. His first wife was named Mongfind, and she bore him four other sons, named Brian, Alil, Fiachri, and Fergus. Mongfind was jealous of Karen and put her to work doing hard labour, hoping to harm her pregnancy and that she would miscarry. One day, while fetching a pail of water, Karen goes into labour and bears the boy Niall. Fearing the harm that Mongfind might do if she finds the child, Karen abandoned the poor boy to the birds and the elements until he is found and foster fathered by a wise poet named Torna Echis or Torna the Sage, a man noted as being the last great bard of pagan Ireland. As a young man, Niall will return to his father's court at Tara and relieve his mother from the burdens that had been continually yoked on her by the jealous Mongfind. As time went by, Niall's popularity at court grew and grew. He was of a friendly temperament and spent time with the warriors and the learned men alike, learning their ways and their habits, endearing himself 
the wall that he met. In the shadows, Mong Fiend lay ever watching the young man from afar. She grew wary of his ambitions and sought to ensure that one of her sons would succeed their father to the throne. After a series of tests set out by the druids, Niall emerges as the worthy heir. In one of the accounts we see the symbolism of the female goddess as it relates to the sovereignty of the land, a common theme throughout all Irish mythology. In this challenge, the brothers are faced with an old and ugly crone who challenges each of them to kiss her. And it is only Niall who kisses her deeply and passionately as though she were his own wife. At this point, she turned into a beautiful maiden and marked him out as Ireland's next high king. A varying account tells how the succession of Yoi was still left to be settled at the time of his death and seizing this opportunity, Mong Finn's brother, Grimmon MacFidag, a king of Munster, took the high kingship for himself. At some point later, while Crimin happened to be overseas in Scotland, Mongfind conspired with her sons and they seized the throne for themselves in his absence. Upon his return, Crimin was enraged and resolved to go to battle with his nephews. Mongfind invited him to a feast under the guise that she would offer him a hand of peace. Instead, she offered him a chalice filled with poison wine. Suspicious of her wiles, Crimin refused to drink from the chalice before she did. And so, without missing a beat, Mong Finn drank from the chalice and Crimin followed, and each died moments later on the spot. Despite her best efforts, it is still Niall, not Brion, Alil, Fiercre or Fergus, who succeeds Crimin to the throne where he continued his reign. However, it is said that his brother Brion became his second in command. One further telling of the tale has it that Mong Finn tried to poison Niall. However, in this tale, she mistakenly drinks the lethal brew, killing herself in the process. Ruling from the ancient site on the hill of Tara, Niall's modus operandi for gaining dominance was taking hostages from the family of neighbours and under kings. He also led successful raids against Roman Britain and Scotland. Some stories say that the future St. Patrick was among the hostages taken from one of these expeditions. And he also conquered much of Ulster. There are also various accounts describing his death. However, it is always Yoi, the son of King Aina of Leinster, who is named as his killer. After the death of Niall of the Nine Hostages, one of his sons, Leary, became High King. But his lineage would produce many, many more High Kings. In fact, the O'Neill dynasty would remain one of the most powerful of all the old Gaelic families. All but two of the High Kings who sat at Tara came from this family. And by the 8th century, the O'Neills were a powerhouse in both the North, where they were known as the Northern O'Neill, and also in the Midlands of the country, where they were known as the Southern O'Neill.